two, one, and ding. We are officially live. Although nice, nice. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Welcome to Question and Answer episode 12. I'm your host, mm -hmm. CS Joseph. And my and co I'm your co-host, Jabba. CS Ooh. Jabba. <laughs> CS Jabba in the house. CS Jabba in the house. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. fantastic, right? I mean, I mean, I could just be like, be like Gary Vaynerchuk and be like, welcome to the show, everybody. It's CS Joseph and CS Jabba doing all the things tonight. I got all your questions ready to go. But I'm not going to like do that because mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. Even though stuff. you just did it. Yeah, you know, I even just, though you did, just it. did it. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, I'm, but I'm like, <laughs> no. How about, uh, how about I just actually like answer the questions? Answer some questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. Raka's like, ooh, that's cringe, except Gary V is actually an ENFP like Raka. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh oh. Zing. <laughs> okay. but let's go with Dome's Day's questions. What's the best way to meet an ISFJ in society? The best way to meet an ISFJ in society? Uh, go to the police station. Uh, <laughs> like, seriously. Go to the police station. <laughs> Uh, the gym as well. Uh, this is going to sound odd. Mm -hmm. The casino. I'm not even kidding. The casino. Go to the casino. Yeah. ISFJs love hanging out with their SP friends at the casino. It's very common for some reason uh -huh. because uh, ESFP Shadow Generous. just ends up bringing them right into the casino. Uh, the other place right, you right. can find ISFJs are churches. Consistently churches. They're churches. Full. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. lots. They're full of ISFJs. Uh, that's that's right. That's right, Jab. You you know, oh Jab, you want an ISFJ? Yeah. You just go go to church, Jab. Just go to church. You know, yeah. Get some Jesus. Go get saved. Yeah. Once you're saved, Jab. Exactly. Uh, only then, and only then, <laughs> you are worthy. You are worthy to take on an ISFJ wife uh, and approved oh, wow. by your local church, Jab. So I'm yeah. honored. Yeah. Very honored. very honored. Uh, so All yeah. Right. Next question. There is controversy. <clears throat> sorry, there is controversy around the correct typing of INFJs. See comment section of season three, episode twelve. For example, mistyping is a problem. Yes, but could some who challenge you actually be correctly typed as INFJs, but have an immature NE nemesis? In other words, are they hyper defensive because they do not trust you knowing them better than they know themselves, especially their weakness? Uh, so too long. Didn't read. Um, what he's saying is that maybe, um, so the controversy in the INFJ video, um, you say that a lot of the people arguing with you might be mistyped, but this person is saying, is it possible that it's because they're immature, any nemesis, and they're paranoid about you understanding them better than they understand themselves, and they lash out? Yeah, sure. I mean, anyone can cognitive transition if they're, like, being concerned or confronted with the fact that they're being analyzed. So either people have to, right. it's just like hypno hypnosis. You have to be willing to be hypnotized in order to actually be hypnotized. So what I like doing is observing people like as a third party from a distance where they don't know that I'm analyzing them, which gives me the advantage. And then I, and, and it increases accuracy. If they know that they're being analyzed and they're doing it unwillingly, then they'll cognitive transition and it makes the typing a lot more difficult. If they're, mm -hmm. uh, if they're willing, then, it, then they'll stay in their ego and it's completely different. So you just kind of have to be aware of that issue. Uh, when it comes to uh, typing people, etc. Right, 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 right. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next question. Why does every type feel like they have a special uh, chemistry with ENFP? NT, Why does... especially CF. Okay, sorry, the grammar of this question isn't great. I mean, I promise you I can read English. Um, but yeah, the question seems to be, why do people seem to like ENFPs a lot? Why do people seem to like ENFPs a lot? I have no idea where what the context of this question is even is, so I can't even answer it accurately. Uh, I, for one, uh, I do like ENFPs, but do I like them in general? I mean, it, like I, I meet one and it's like great, but then like I'm very guarded around them because they're an NFP. Because it's like, okay, are this, is this person going to shice me or not? You know what I mean? So you never know. I have to like acclimate to them and get to know them first, you know, get their feel before I make a decision. But do people in general think ENFPs are amazing? I mean, maybe. 
everyone thinks Tony Robbins is pretty dope and he's an ENFP, right? So, but like it just, it all depends. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So there's nothing like in the function stack of an ENFP that makes everyone just like love the shit out of them? Uh, well, I could make that argument for any type. I don't know why it has to be centered right. around ENFPs. Like I, I just, I just don't, you know. And Selma, okay. and and Selma in the chat, LOL, he hates us. Sad face. No, I don't hate ENFPs. I just recognize that they have weaknesses like every other type, and I have to protect myself from you know those issues. Just like meeting an ENTP, meeting an INTJ, meeting any of them. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's standard for everybody. It's not just me singling a type out. That just happened to be the context of this particular question. So, right, right, right. Okay. Um, let's go to the next question. And that is, oof, another ISFP, ISFJ question. Sorry. How do you get ISFJs to give you space? A lot of people describe hovering ISFJ mothers who don't know boundaries. Uh, you have to tell them that they're, you have to literally tell them, like, you're pressuring me too much, back off, and you tell that to them directly. Mm -hmm. I don't feel good about how much you're pressuring me. And then that'll spark their SE nemesis to start worrying about pressuring you. And then they will back off and give you space, basically. Uh-huh. So you got to guilt them. And that's basically right. how it works. Next question. Typing on micro not, expressions, especially. It's sorry, not, go on. It's not guilt, although guilt can work. Don't worry. It's an ISFJ. Yeah. You could definitely guilt an ISFJ to do things. But it's more of you're just telling their SE nemesis you're pressuring me. Because an ISFJ, right. the last thing that they ever want is to be pressured into doing things that they don't want to do. So right. that could be a problem, right? Right, right, right. I see. So you're giving me a bad experience. Stop it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Next question. Typing on micro expressions, especially eye movements. Would like to know more about this. I admire watching any eyes jumping all over. Diagonal movement like yours. Okay. So look up Voltology, as that's the closest uh, physical typing strategy that I've seen. It's not accurate, not 100% accurate. Um, my ESTP mentor, however, uh, was very skilled at this. and He has his own system that he developed. Uh, it's not published yet. Uh, I am going to attempt to work with him and actually potentially bring him on the stream, actually, to discuss that. And I think that'll be very meaningful for the audience. Um, right. And uh, potentially maybe even do a season uh, with him uh, to explain that, basically. So I, I am looking forward to having that opportunity, and we're uh, in discussion about it right now. So. Okay. Um, next question. Why do perceiving functions matter more in compatibility than judging? For example, an ENFP INTJ have fifth compatibility and NINE SE SI match up perfectly, but ENFP ISFJ have TITE FE FI matching up, but only have ninth highest compatibility. Uh, it's because uh, you want to have good cognitive synchronicity and cognitive synchronicity let me get the uh, microphone a little bit closer here. There we go. So cognitive synchronicity, you can learn about that in season five. It's a playlist here on the YouTube channel. Uh, definitely uh, review that and you'll see that you wanna have your perceiving functions and your judging functions matching up to each other because the extroverted ones are trying to consume the introverted ones and you want them close together. Uh, so like parent to hero, hero to hero, parent to parent. Uh, etc. in that regard. Uh, that way they're close enough to interact with each other and be able to provide energy to each other in that process, but otherwise uh, mm -hmm. not, you know, having them much lower, that would be a problem. So like an ENFP versus ISFJ relationship, which is actually very common. Uh, my ENFP mentor, uh, he didn't teach me type, but he taught me more about life. He's married to an ISFJ. And uh, Although their decision making somewhat aligns, even though uh, like perfectly, so their their perceptions are just not really that aligned, which which can cause a lot of problems in the relationship, especially sexual ones. Uh, if your perceiving functions aren't lined up, you're going to have sexual problems in your relationship. That's just a fact. 
So uh, it's best to make sure that you are as synchronous as possible, especially in romantic relationships. Professional relationships, parenting, or other relationships outside of a romantic, intimate relationship, the rules are different, and there's a lot more leeway. But when it comes to intimate relationships, mm -hmm. in order to achieve uh, total intimacy, you want your perceiving functions and your uh, judging functions to match up as much as possible. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, right, so, right, right. so, so Jab, uh, I would like to remind the audience of the format. So where are we getting the questions? The questions are put into our Q&A channel on our Discord server. If you do not know where our Discord server is, there's two ways you can get to it. The first is you go to my Instagram, at cs.joseph. You go to my profile, you click on the bio link, you click Discord, and then you sign up and you get on our Discord server. Good to go. Or you click the Discord link in the description of all of the videos here on this channel, and then you are on our Discord server, and you just ask questions in the Discord server channel, which is fantastic as well. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that and don't want to join Discord server, you could use the YouTube chat, which we may answer at times. Or if you really guaranteed want your question asked tonight, you can use the super chat and we'll stop everything we're doing and answer your question, basically, just to give you guys an idea of what the format is. But otherwise, uh, right now, the Discord questions mostly take precedence because we have like a backlog of a month's worth of questions. Right, Jeb? Is it a, is it a month? Uh, about that. Going back to about November 5th. Yeah, exactly. So just just let you guys know, that's just kind of how we've been doing this. Uh, we will get to some of the YouTube questions eventually. Um, right. Yeah. We've got a few in at the end of the episode. So, speaking, of, that should be good. speaking of which, Kenji Mall says, does matching up mean N-E to N-I heroes or N-E to N-E? No, no, it's N-E to N-I because N-E is trying to consume the N-I. That is matching up. It, you don't want N-E right. to N-E. That is a that is very painful and not something I recommend. Right, because any to any, nobody's going to know what each other wants, and there's going to be lots of questions. Yeah, exactly. At, at least from my understanding, ni to ni can work, provided both people want the same thing. But the question is, are you going to want the same thing for thirty years of your life? And that's something you're going to have to work on. Yep. Um. Let's see. Go to our next question. Give me a second. Lost my footing. We are up to um, video recommendation, typing people, drive through edition. I got a job in a drive through and jump from different sides to my mind every minute deed to, every minute to deal with someone. What are open questions to figure out type? What are attitudes of types as they come through? Your help is needed. INFPs are taking receipts. They don't want ESFJs are telling their kids to order. The ITPs behind them are livid. That would be like, <laughs> do you know what that would be? They should like wear like a body cam on them uh -huh. and then record that with the sound and everything. Do a live stream. Dude, do or, a live stream. Yeah, yeah, of the, of the drive through, the drive through at my work, and they're <laughs> typing people and how they behave. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get them to like live stream the footage and me and you would just sit there typing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we got a super chat. Question for Chase. Question for Chase and or Jabba. In an INTJ, what would the nemesis critic function look like when attacking the child inferior? What do you mean an INTJ's critic or nemesis attacking someone need, else's child or inferior? Yeah, we need to... Uh, we need which type are they going up against? So, Mr. Always Improving, please uh, state which type are you asking for, INTJ versus which? Their own. So INTJ on INTJ, in that case, or, uh, or internalized. Oh, internalized, internalized or to another INTJ. Well, I mean, it, it wouldn't matter basically because if it's an INTJ right. versus INTJ, it's like, well, then the same thing. The critic is telling them, you know, uh, what you're saying is not true, and you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's how. Right. That's right. exactly what they would be doing. Um, does that answer your question? Improving. What would the nemesis critic functions look like when attacking? So, yeah, the, the they, nemesis, the nemesis would be functions. like you're going to betray me, and the critic functions yeah. would be like what you're saying is not true. If you're attacking their child, 
then it's going to be like, hey, uh, you're a bad person. If you're attacking their inferior, you say that you're ugly, you smell bad, you sound bad. No one would ever get a good experience <laughs> dancing with you. Like you're going to be ugly exactly. forever. You're not going to be fit enough to bear children. You know, those types of statements. Wow. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, it's basically calling an INTJ unfit. It also works wow. with INFJs, calling them unfit. Yeah, not good enough, stuff not like that. Enough. Yep. It's like, All right. You got to be careful. That was actually that. kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah. Kind of depressing. Yeah, like hit me right in the feels. In the feels. All right, next question. Some people are really difficult to have productive conversations with in a group setting. They're too silly or demeaning, but get them one-on-one -on -one and they're easier to talk to them. Is this because cognitive transitions into types more compatible with mine or masks? If it's masks, which types are more likely to exhibit this behavior? Uh, it could be masks, it could be transitions, but you just have to understand that the more people you have present in a social dynamic, uh, clicks can start to form. Uh, you may be able to have an introverted situation where you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, even though there's a crowd of people present, or you may have to be referring to like many to one at that point in time. You know, who's the center of attention mm -hmm. in that issue? There's so many different little dichotomies you have to be aware of, different aspects, different attributes of that social environment to really tell what's going on. And just watch people after a while, you'll see them transitioning or you'll see them not transitioning, et cetera. That can be a consistent issue. So right. that's kind of how I would approach that in terms of like what types do it more than others. Uh, it's basically everyone does it. And in which types have mm -hmm. more masks than others, definitely uh, intuitive perceivers would have uh, more masks mm -hmm. for sure. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, let's go into the next question. Okay, so this is a personal one about you. Okay. If you lived in your INTJ shadow for years with your parents and SE demon is your gateway, can you, as Chase, access this side of your mind more easily? And if the and if the acts as ego, will your super ego act as your subconscious? Uh, yeah, the answer to that is yes, it would give me better access to my super ego, and that's kind of why I could be super snarky and sarcastic and hilarious at times, uh -huh. uh, even though, like, other ENTPs, especially younger ENTPs, not really. But because I have been so shadow-focused, I am able to bleed into my ESFP super ego in that manner, but mm -hmm. it would be more Same destructive uh, had I not had my ISFJ subconscious developed as well, which we saw proof of that in the recent in the recent How to Social Engineer ESFPs lecture, where I talk at length about my divorce and how I had right, to right. use SI inferior to basically utilize to master self discipline uh, to get through uh, my eleven year marriage to that ESFP. Uh, so yes. So, so what you're effectively saying is you need your subconscious to keep your super ego in check. Correct, because even if I can get into the subconscious with my demon function or into my superego with my demon function, the results could still be very destructive. It's not until I have mastery of the subconscious and the shadow simultaneously that I can actually use the right. superego in a healthful or healthy way, basically. Okay. Um, Devin's got a question. Go on to the super chat. Yeah. Would you consider a video on how mindfulness meditation, actively not thinking in daily life, affects a person's stack slash appearance of a type? Actively not thinking in daily life? Are we talking about are we talking about TI tricksters at that point? Because they're definitely not no, actively no, 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 thinking. No, no, no. I think he's talking about meditation and letting your mind go clear and whether this act of like allowing your mind to go clear and just relax would affect your function stack. No, I probably wouldn't. Uh, the reason is because, again, the shadow focus versus subconscious focus between third world and first world countries uh, and certain cultures and societies value meditation more. And some for some reason, it could be shadow focused or it could be subconscious focused. I, either way, it can get through. It could get through like, you mm -hmm. know, it, 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 it comes it stems from the ignorance is bliss argument, really. And the ignorance is bliss argument is usually typical of societies or communal groups that are focused on their subconscious, whereas not so much their shadow, right? So mm -hmm. 
But to add to that, I'm not an expert on meditation. I mean, you're talking to a guy who would tell you to read uh, The Way uh, of the Superior Man by David Data, who is an INFJ. And he has got like a chapter or two uh, related to breathing techniques and meditation to which I just basically insta ignore and don't really care about. I'm not saying that this audience shouldn't care about that because I'm sure it's very meaningful for other people, but does it help me relax? No. Being productive right, so and getting you know, getting tasks completed, that's more valuable to me as right, an ENTP. Right, right. But to an INFP or an INFJ, they might find that relaxing, but someone like me wouldn't. So I don't really spend as okay. much time as a result. He's saying it's not meditation. So what is he talking about? Some like ultra instinct of life where you just don't think and just roll with the punches? Oh, just like um, being chaotic, being like super yin at everything. Is that what he's referring to? Maybe. Um, before we continue, just want to, we got another super chat from Aiden Weishness. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Because of your channel, an ENTP girl found me and now we're turning into a great relationship. Thank you. Oh, look at Chase. Awesome. He's making love. He's making love. Wow, dude. That, that came out wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That, that came, came out, out wrong. very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, oh. Devin, I want uh, you to clarify your question, please, in a different way. Right. So please clarify that. While you're typing that out, Jad, let's ask the next question and then get back to Devin. Yep. Um, how do we get over the insecurity of the inferior function and aspire with it? Uh, the best way to do this is watch season 16, episode four. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I yeah, I mean, no, if I no. could chime in, yeah, go developing for it. Your, your inferior function is kind of like lifting weights. You kind of just have to start slow and build it up. You yeah. can't just jump in and expect to lift those 40 kilogram weights. Like, nah, it's not happening. Practice does so make it perfect. Slow. You need to expose yourself in a way that doesn't completely psychologically destroy you. So if you have like an extroverted um, inferior function, you obviously don't want to go up and... Um, chat in front of 500 people first time you kind of want to work your way up start with small crowds um say jokes in front of three or four friends and then build up your circle of friends uh, come onto the csj server we, we can sometimes have 10 to 15 people in the channels engage in those conversations like build yourself up don't jump into the deep end um yeah so has he clarified that question yet uh, no I'm waiting on the clarification on that. Is he in the is he in the Discord? Um, I don't know because I am scrolled a month up. Okay, that's fine. I'm in the live stream discussion. I don't see anything there. Maybe he'll. All right, I'm just gonna keep. Well, I'll just keep going with questions, and if you oh, see, he, he needs more time. Just Let's thing. just do another one. Right. Awesome. Right. In an emergency situation, one that turns off our emotions because there's no time to talk think or feel just react i believe we cognitively shift but what side of our mind do we shift to since fear isn't a factor in that instance would you technically be aspiring in your subconscious that's a great question i love that question who asked that question oh it's gonna be one of your favorites one of your favorites oh yeah lizard wizard yeah. lizard wizard oh yes lizard wizard awesome yes actually uh it, you don't you do, you do shift you do cognitive transition but your mind takes you to where you need to go. So for example, right. if you're about to get into a car wreck and you're an INTP, it's going to shift you probably into your SP uh, super ego just to, to, in an attempt to save your life. It's like your brain or your mind has literally just said, screw it. I'm lighting all of reality on fire right now because we're going to focus on this one little thing not dying in this car and you'll become the master of the road for the next five seconds. Right. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, it's kind of like heroism or bloodlust in world of Warcraft. You know what I mean? You just, you, you, right. you, you pop that when you're get down to about 25% on a boss and you're landing in that kill, you know what I mean? Or when you get about, uh, 20, 20% because you can start spamming execute over and over and over again for those of you that played warrior, even though I was a death knight and a rogue, right. but whatever. Uh, uh, nerd. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and that totally like messed up uh, my marriage too while we're at it. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what happens. Uh, it will take you to the side of your mind that it needs the most to react to the situation. Your 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 mind is your mind and soul are 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 strong and intelligent enough and adaptable enough to actually take you to the side of the mind that it needs to go in order to solve the emergency situation there. However, okay, that's not to say that. SI heroes, for example, or SI parents, even SI users in general, like if there's like an explosion that's like right next to when it happens, they didn't see it coming. They're going to have many seconds of normalcy bias at first until their mind can get them, can, can transition them. Whereas SPs who are already in that SE mode in, in their ego by default, they'll be able to react faster and potentially need to save the SI users in that uh, particular moment. But it, again, it just depends as whether or not the SI user can see it coming with their expert intuition, or mm -hmm. uh, or if the uh, if they're you know if they're or if they need SE, et cetera. It really, really depends on the situation. And the brain or the mind is already aware of other human beings who may be potential allies around them, and that also affects its decision making in transitioning and what ha and how it's necessary to do it. Whereas if you're just by yourself and you're about to get in a car wreck, your brain or your mind will do what it needs to. So it, it, it's it's very situational, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but all of our brains are connected to all of each other's brains, and it just kind yeah. of knows by default who's around you and what's available at the time. So, all right. So we got another super chat from Aiden Wojcicki, and he said, "I know it may be a touchy subject, but does personality type predict the range of someone's intelligence?" Uh, no, no, it doesn't, uh, because STJs and NFPs are more successful at being academics than the rest of the type. So that doesn't necessarily mean they're more intelligent. Whereas uh, mm -hmm. SPs uh, specifically are very good uh, with physical mastery, uh, woodworking, anything that has to do with their hands, performing, etc. And there could be like genius in developing music, for example. Does that does that mean like there's so many different ways to measure intelligence? And relying on IQ, in my opinion, is absolutely a waste of time. Like seriously, don't mm -hmm. care about that because it, because it's not it's too subjective. It's not uh, narrow enough. It's way too broad. Because are you judging based on people in a certain temperament? What about their interaction right. style? What about the individual right. type that they actually are? Like this is why IQ is literally absolutely you know just not going to work. Uh, it's just not. So right. yeah, it is a touchy subject, and uh, type does not predict a range of someone's intelligence. No. Uh, so mm -hmm. Devin got back to us. Um, yep. Um, oh yeah, the practitioner is fully alert, aware, in control of their faculties, but does not experience any thought activity while conscious. A percentage of the pop does this actively, and it affects typing. And then he had something else to say after that. So basically. And that, yep. And after that, he said, so basically my impression is that a person is a type by nature, but appears to function differently by turning off their T. Right. Uh, even if they're doing that, they're not going to get away from their ego functions. They are who they are even though they may, right. be, it may be more difficult to observe them. But then you can get someone like my ECP mentor who's really good at looking at the physical attributes of somebody and then knowing their type just off of that, regardless of any interaction with them, right? And it, it won't matter. It, it just won't matter because they cannot, human beings are still slaves to their nature no longer, no matter how much we try to hide our nature. Right even if we transition to make it look like we're in a nature that is not, that people are not used to, or if we're using mind altering substances, it doesn't matter. You are still a slave to your nature at the end of the day. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have another super chat from Aiden Wojcicki again. And if type is genetically determined, are two particular types more likely to have a certain type of kid? For example, I'm, I, I'm an INTJ. My mother is an ISTJ and my dad was an INTP. Uh, the answer to that is we don't know technically, but uh, I right. would venture to conjecture that the answer is no, uh, because right. type is, it's just not genetically determined in as much as left-handedness and right-handedness is not genetically determined. Now they found some correlations to show that handedness may be determined by genetics, but again, correlation is not causation. So right. it, it, it's not cause. Uh, we don't have enough evidence of that. I would venture to guess if I am able to do what I intend to do uh, with this community 
and uh, with the world at large within the next three to four years, we will definitely have the answer to that question. And if all of you folks continue to uh, follow me and support me and uh, this group of individuals who are doing this and working actively together to answer these questions, we'll definitely get the data and the analytics in your hands. Uh, we just need your continued support to do so. But uh, but definitely type, I no, is not genetically determined. It's just not. So. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so this comes from a, I believe it's an, well, it, their type is an INFP, and they ask, how to be taken seriously in an office environment as a woman with very good looking and teenage face? INFP, early 30s, project manager in fashion industry, con constant developer of bestsellers in the company. So she's concerned about a lack of respect. Um, right, she's, she's concerned that people aren't taking her seriously because she's a good looking, attractive female. Yeah. Well, is it is it from female coworkers or male coworkers? I mean, it definitely presents a channel or a, a challenge. And 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 this and NFPs and STJs are specifically sensitive to that more than the other uh, types. So uh, it's, it right. makes sense that an INFP would ask this question because that quadra specifically believes that uh, their looks inhibit them from uh, being able uh -huh. to communicate or be taken seriously as a result. Uh, so here's how she needs to do. She needs to be, she needs to stop being afraid of what other people think of her and she just needs to be mm -hmm. direct with people. That's it. She needs to use yeah. her ESTJ subconscious and develop her ESTJ mm -hmm. subconscious and, uh, take more of that management role, be direct with people order them around if they have to. Uh, and uh, if they, and if those people do not comply, then she needs to enforce the rules or get somebody to the, to enforce the rules for her so that those people could be chided or potentially punished for uh, not adhering to her authority, basically, uh, in that right. uh, manager role. So that's that's the only way that she can really get these people to take her seriously. She has to develop her ESTJ subconscious. Yeah, this is actually sounding like a TE inferior problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um... Next question. Do SE users have an easier time remembering stuff through other SI users? Yes, absolutely. So because the, regards to the borrowing. Yeah, because the SI user becomes a totem. So in the SI user, they just look at the SI user and then they can just instantly think about what they need. That's why SE users need their SI users near them and be around them so that they can have their long-term memories because over time, especially in intimate relationships, the SE users store their long-term memories within the SI user of the relationship, literally inside of them. Okay. All right. Next question is, so you mentioned in FAQ F9 that people meditate using their SI function, which got me thinking what happens when you meditate SI demon? Is it healthy to continue or... Uh, SI demon users not able to do so. I'm asking because I'm an INTJ and I have actually felt worse after meditation, having strange invasive dark thoughts, which suddenly came out of nowhere. So I stopped meditating. I meditate through other actions like running or listening to music or both at the same time. I'd like your thoughts on the matter. This is like the second or third time this question has been asked. Uh, the How I answered it last time was is that if you are an INJ, you're actually probably using your introvert intuition. And if you're doing it by yourself, it's going to be a bad experience. So I would recommend not doing it by yourself. So you can use your SE mm -hmm. to SE the other people in the room that you're doing it with and, and absorb their level of comfort with the meditation so that you can be comfortable and relaxed within your meditation and then you will be successful. Okay, um, Kevin Smith asks, with the super chat, do you think it's possible to master every function, not just confined to their slot through practice or artificially via supplements? 10 out of 10 server, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Kevin Smith uh, for the 10 out of 10. Uh, do you think it's possible to master every function? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Within their slots. But the thing is their slots change if you're cognitive transition into one of the other four sides of your mind. So technically you could potentially uh, master each uh, function in different slots as the, your four sides of the mind allow. 
Now we're gonna be talking about this concept of uh, downshifting later where you can kind of downshift other functions when you're emulating and only through emulation of functions. And you can kind of have like some pseudo mastery or do you appear to master certain functions or appear to produce certain functions, which is kind of talked about in season five when we talk about cognitive synchronicity. Uh, but that, that material will be covered in season 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's go to the next question. Does SE Trickster make you suck at skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding, nobody awareness? Are there ways to improve it? Yes, yes it does. It makes you suck at all of those things. <laughs> the only way to improve it is self-discipline. You have to be taught by someone who is good at it, and then you have to fail at it over and over and over again while they show you all of the mistakes that you're making until you finally get it right. You just have to have a good trainer, right. a good master uh, to show it to you. And then, yeah, but definitely you are automatically bad at those things. And I wish I wasn't bad so at those the, things. Right. So the TLDR is you need to use your SI by memorizing the stuff that your master teaches you and then doing that to a T. Yeah, in front of your master so the master can actually show you how to do it correctly or your teacher, your maestro or uh -huh. whatever. Look at Igas. But here's the thing. Like to this day, I struggle with ice skating and I'm forcing myself to learn ice skating. I never wanted to learn ice skating before, but I am now. Why? Because my four-year-old little girl loves ice skating and she tells me, daddy, you have to ice skate with me. It's like, okay, fine. I'll get my skates on and get my big thing of buckets and I hold on to the buckets, you know, looking like a moron and <laughs> trying to go around <laughs> as she's ice skating. And she's like, follow me, daddy. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. And then I just go splat in my face every now and then. But, you know, it is it is what I, I, I try. But um, I definitely am going to need lessons because there's no way I'm going to be able to figure it out on my own. Because I've been like right. eating my buckets like the last four times I've been at the skating rink with like no improvement whatsoever. So that's an example uh -huh. of low SE and, and SI inferior. All right, next question is, if you've got FI Trickster, should you not express what you like, dislike, unless you're 100% sure the other person likes it? Sounds like being inauthentic. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's being inauthentic, but that's technically true. That's kind of an FE child approach because when FI Trickster shares what it likes with people, it can be very off-putting and can give them a bad experience, especially if there's SE Demon present and it's coming from an ENTP. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> ideal. Not ideal at all. Okay, next question. How does TE child make miracles? And how should I, as an ENFP, try to develop it? How do other child functions make miracles? Are you sure you put out the child function video recently? Or yeah, I did. Put so? the, I put it up. Um, that's season 16, episode three. And uh, how do the child functions make miracles? It's when well, I mean, if they're used and they're properly parented by the parent function, they can create miracles. You know, no not believing in yourself, right? And uh, what does FE child do? That means uh, ENTPs and ESTPs can become the most caring of all the types. It's actually very possible. Uh, hmm. Or um, introverted sensing, a child can experience the greatest things in life and, and know experiences more and better and more intimately than anyone else can or an eye child, an eye child can get through some insane labyrinths and the miracle itself is to get through labyrinths, basically. Those are the different ways I'd approach it. Um, all Oof. right, we got another one from Aiden, Aiden again. Again, big bowler, shot cola over here. You've said you will explain which side of the mind different drugs will put you in. So what happens from marijuana, LSD, alcohol, et cetera? All right, sure. so uh, marijuana, typically, when it's not combined with other things, this is assuming you're not taking any mind-altering drugs like antidepressants or anything like that, or caffeine. Marijuana is considered, even though people claim it's a depressant, it's actually a stimulant, technically. And uh, because of that, it will usually put you in your subconscious. Alcohol is a depressant, therefore it'll put you in your shadow. So depressants put you in your shadow, and uh, stimulants put you in, in your subconscious. However, if you get overstimulated, you'll be in your superego. If you get over uh, depressant, you'll be in your superego. Uh, and then there will be a positive or a negative tinge depending on, you know, what direction that you're getting into your superego from. So just be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay, let's see what we got next. Another. Oh, another, another one. All right, okay. what's, what are some tactics to fight off the laziness of my INTJ mind? 
uh, find someone else who's a starter and finish what they start, basically. Otherwise, you need to force yourself uh -huh. to learn how to start things, even if you're not in the mood to do it. If your mood is getting in the way, then there's something wrong with you. Like psychologically, you need to get that fixed. And uh, what I would recommend is you immediately start with reading 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson, followed by No More Mr. <laughs> nice Guy. Followed by No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. Followed by The Way of the Superior yeah. Man by David Data. Followed by The Boy Crisis by Warren Farrell. Read all four books in that order. And uh, you will have um, basically a lot more to go off with so that you can actually start things instead of just being focused on finishing things. Because otherwise, you're not going to have an okay sleep schedule. You're going to be treating yourself like crap when you shouldn't be. Uh, you're not going to be uh -huh. valuing yourself properly. And you're going to become ineffective, which is just going to increase your performance anxiety. And then you're going to stay at the bottom rung of society for the rest of your life. Uh, when in reality, you have to develop habits. And you have to understand mm. that developing those positive habits becomes the right. master strategy for you to be successful in life. Habits are everything. Right. And INTJs and INFJs struggle building habits. NJs in general struggle building habits more than any other types. So uh, be aware of that. You have to become a <laughs> slave word? to healthy habits. Mm -hmm. Right. And another way you can build those habits is through routine. So wake up the same time every morning, go to bed the same time at night. Um, um, I will list the books again. 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. And The Boy Crisis by Warren Farrell. All three of those, or all four of those books, need to be read. If you are a member of the male gender, you are required to read them. If you are a member of the female gender, uh, you should read them so that you can hold the men in your life accountable, and also to teach yourself the difference between a man and a boy, so you don't give yourself up to a boy and get screwed because mm -hmm. of it. So yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, twelve rules for life. I mean, isn't that basically just clean your room? I much prefer Chase's version of buy your own place, get your own job, and keep your house clean. And then, like, that's a level beyond Jordan Peterson. Yeah, and but on that lack, note, that's if you lack the willpower to actually read a book, then I'd instantly throw you in the dumpster <laughs> and probably not have anything to do with you because there's no excuse. You need to freaking read books, and if you don't have the patience uh -huh. to actually hold a book in front of you and read it, then get the freaking audio version so that when you're driving on a commute, and hopefully you have a job, and or at least have some kind of downtime, you're not really doing anything, you have the audiobook going as often as possible so that you can get through books. I read two books a week using that audiobook method. So what's your excuse, mm -hmm. right? So you are responsible and just very capable to be able to handle, you know, your, your self-training to be able to develop the proper habits. So start with those four books. That's right. the foundation. Holy smokes. I mean, my excuse is that, yeah, my excuse is that I'm too fat for you to throw me in the dumpster. So I don't have to worry about you dumpstering me. So I don't read on that note. Let's go to this super chat question. That's a lot of though. Anyway, Jason. ENFP here. ENFP here, married with six kids. Keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to that phone app to type on the fly. Right now, your type grid is the background on my phone and computer screens. I love helping people understand how to work with each other. Awesome. Wow, it wasn't even a question. It's just a thank you. Yeah, you're very awesome. welcome. You're very welcome, Mr. Jason. And, uh, and uh, yes, uh, it is coming. It is in development. I have my development team and uh, we are in process. Uh, once we get our Patreon release, which is very soon, I promise. I just, I'm, I'm filming the, uh, the videos for the Patreon this weekend. And I think we're launching next week. Hopefully uh, I hope. Uh, but uh, once the Patreon is done, uh, our number one focus after that will be developing uh, the test. So that's kind of where it's at. Uh, we ran out of money and that's why uh, we stopped development on the test because we ran out of money to pay the developers to actually get the application of the web app set up and then the mobile app version and all of that. So that's what happened. Uh, and uh, once the funds come in, we're definitely going to resume development and get that out to you guys. Uh, we're not going to be charging for the use of those. Those will be made free for all the people. So that's great. For the people. Yep. And then uh, we'll add additional features as we go, as as the community gives us feedback, because we're the uh, the alpha version is going to be insane. And uh, also, patrons of our Patreon, when it does come out, they will be able to beta test it and give us additional feedback to make it better before it actually officially goes live, which will be dope. Mm. So, 
Awesome. Yeah. Poof. Wow. I just, that's, that's insane. It's a lot of money. Okay. Let's go to our next question, which is from, let's see. Sorry. I lost her up to, okay. This one. What effect does the ability to speak multiple languages have on cognitive functions? Can multiple language users access their subconscious or unconscious parts of their brain easier than a single language user? I've noticed other language le uh, learners have this experience too, that sometimes I am a different personality depending on the language. I'm not sure if this is due to confidence, less comfortable or more comfortable, more introverted in a second language, or whether the language itself is culture, has a culture attached to it and forces a certain personality. Is English language interaction more free and spontaneous, perhaps invoking an introvert, sorry, an extroverted personality as opposed to, say, a Russian language interaction? Ooh, I think that might come down to the SE function. Yeah, that's an amazing uh, question. Who asked that question? Right. Uh, Linko Vicha, ENTP. Well, shout out to that person for asking a brilliant question. Uh, so... Uh, my source on, uh, on this answer to this question is actually a film coming out in 2016 known as Arrival starring Amy Adams. If you have not watched that film, you need to. That film was very important. Uh, the reason why is because we actually see how she's not an expert intuitive user. She's not, a, uh -huh. she's not, she's more of a, a T she's kind of more of like a STP NFJ type. I would state she's actually an INFJ uh, actually, but then she starts learning the language of an alien race and it actually gives her the ability to use expert intuition. It is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And you actually see like within the first five seconds of the film, you don't even know that you're like in expert intuition mode. And then you don't even find out like the final five seconds of the film. And it's just like, wow, you know, holy smokes. One of the best films I right. ever recommend for understanding expert intuition and how it actually works and the mind of an ENTP or an ENFP. If you want to understand expert intuition hero, you watch that film. But the whole premise of the film is that she gains access to other cognitive functions and is able to use them as heroes, basically, or even beyond heroes, as a result of learning an alien language, which is not unlike what we have here on planet Earth. Because you are actually able to use the other sides of your minds uh, more frequently uh, and better uh, depending on the language that you're speaking. Like, for example, romantic right. languages, actually, if you have an SP in the side, and it allows you to manifest more SP-related behaviors. Like, languages are attached to different temperaments. And languages are also attached to different interaction styles. And it actually allows you to develop the size of your mind and your gateway functions a lot better. So that's why the more languages you learn, the more access to the mind you end up gaining and you actually end up developing faster. That is a fact. And we've seen it consistently. Uh, I remember I remember somebody who learned uh, uh, Russian uh, and, and was able to read, write in Cyrillic while simultaneously being able to speak Italian uh, and, uh, and also Chinese and English. And it's like, whoa, that's right. like the four corners of the world there. And each of those languages are completely unique, brilliant. And the, the way they are able to use the other sides of their mind, I can see them cognitive transition and like, and this is an INTJ, by the way, this is an INTJ and, uh, the way that they're able to like, like when they're going in their ESFP subconscious and they're actually able to take different kinds of, um, um, you know, jokes from different cultures and completely intertwine them together and create entirely new jokes, depending on which language that they're using at the time to interface with people. It is incredible. And then use that uh, ENTP, you know, visionary, you know, to, to support it. So yes, the answer to that question is yes. Learning languages helps you develop cognitive functions and it increases your ability to synchronize, it increases your access as well with each of your cognitive functions and allows you to get into the other four sides of your mind and develop them more because some languages are attached to different temperaments and different interaction styles in the same way that we have mm -hmm. different temperaments uh, available to different nations of the earth, which is not due in part, not limited to the fact that it's a different language, right? So, you know, and that's kind of what it, it's interesting. Like English primary speaking countries, they're very SJ focused, right? Whereas that's not the case 
like with uh, languages like like Japanese, it's more NJ focused. You see what I'm saying? So just to give you like a different way of looking at it for sure. And we got another super chat. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw it. Now, if I was worried about mispronouncing any of the other names, I'm going to just say Jim. The, the end is silent. The end is silent. Okay, Paul Gimianowitz. No, no. What is the technical? Huh? Uh, no, no. There's one before then, actually. Are you sure? Yep. I'm look. Uh, I will read it then. Uh, ben. Oh, yeah, I see. I see. I see. Okay, it. you got it. Cool. Oh, yeah, I see it. Been another day in the throes of mistyping INTP, INFP on Discord. When's the comparison vid coming? Lots of itching for it. Tips beyond the easy stuff. It is coming. It's so, part of season 10, and it will be out very soon. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> it's I, I, I am actively making episodes for that season. I am, I promise. I'm, I'm actually, I was supposed to do one yesterday, actually. It'll be the next, uh, season 10 will be the next lecture I release. And then another season mm -hmm. 16 after that. And then another season twenty one and and whatnot, but yes, season ten is right. a priority. I will get it done. Although season right. fourteen, which will be my final type comparison season that I will do, anyone after that will just be bonuses. But season fourteen is going to potentially have it will have a uh, romantic compatibility component to it. So it'll be like the first taste right. of romantic compatibility that we're going to be diving into for season fourteen, right? With type comparison, yeah, and yeah. on that. And on that note, the main difference between INTPs and INFPs is affiliative versus pragmatic. Go watch the video on that. And then interest versus systematic. Those are the two main differences which should help you differentiate. So if you get good at under understanding those four things, you should be able to differentiate the two, at least using the type grid. Um, the next question, Paul Zimianowicz. What is the technical reason why our type is immutable? In other words, what exactly defines the balance of the functions of the four sides of the mind snapping into alignment relative to others? Uh, it really comes down to chaos versus order, uh, the Taoist uh, yin and yang equilibrium. That is that is 100% the answer to that question. And we're going to be discussing a little bit more about that in uh, season 17. Uh, every Everything in existence is basically you know, the grand ultimate, you know, it's, it's, um, it is ruled by the concept of the yin and yang equilibrium and our minds are literally the same. And that's why, you know, the yin and yang, the, the two serpents, you know, the white serpent, the black serpent, you could kind of see the two heads of the serpent is the ego and the super ego, uh, within the mind. And then the legs are the subconscious and the unconscious basically. And they're trying, you know, they're they're at odds with each other, but in equilibrium with each other. You just have to master the other side, you know, because one side, the ego, is the more yang side of the mind. Even though, when you it starts going into other male and female properties below, then as well. Um, so just just be aware <laughs> that that is a thing, and I will be discussing that in uh, season seventeen at length. I think it's probably gonna be the first episode of season seventeen. But that was an excellent question, but. The true answer to that is basically the Taoist concept of yin and yang, uh, the the yang, uh, the firm and the pliable yin, basically. Uh, so yeah, I that probably was not useful, and I apologize, Paul. Uh, but uh, I it's episode one of season seventeen, and which is very around the corner because we only have two episodes of season sixteen left. So right. Um, here's a question for me specifically, Jabba. Will you run more streams on fictional characters? I did a Discord session last week. I was planning on doing one this weekend. However, I have to present a presentation on Monday, so that'll probably be pushed back maybe midweek or the following weekend. So in regards to that, stay in tune. And it will not be a live stream. It'll probably be exclusively on the Discord server. If you're lucky, I might put it on SoundCloud and put it in the channel. Um. And on that note, let's go to the next question. Uh, do you want to run through some of the Discord questions so we can get a few out of the way? Like, um, Got Sorry, any yeah. opinions on the love languages test and how it relates to personality type? I guess it's much more closely linked to nurture yes, rather than nature. I do. I do. And there will be uh -huh. an entire season devoted to the love languages. It's already on the schedule. It's been on the schedule for four months. So, yes. Uh -huh. It's coming. All right. Next. 
Next question. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people, especially millennial women, use I feel like instead of I think when expressing an opinion. Do you think it's possible that in some cases this is not pointing to FI rather than TI use, but is part of nurture because women don't want to expect, express their opinions forcefully? I f it seems that using I feel instead of I think softens it a little and opens them to less conflict. Yeah, that happens all the time. Like uh, the ENFJ lovers in my life have all done that. And they're they were all they were all uh -huh. millennials. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, do certain types have certain martial arts that would be better suited to them? If they do, what are they? I understand you will be doing a lecture series on martial arts and cognitive functions, but I'm going to take Taekwondo soon and I'd like to know if this is a good choice. And this person has their types set as ENFP on the server. Yes, and uh, I would recommend Taekwondo for an ENFP for sure. Um, it's it's really subjective which martial arts style is ideal for some types. I usually tell SPs, especially STPs, to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and uh, Muay Thai first. I tell uh, NTPs mm -hmm. to do JKD and Capoeira, um, and uh, and I but I've noticed but I've noticed. Uh, I notice everyone can do all it all for SI users. It's anything that really emphasizes self-discipline. That's why Taekwondo is actually very useful for an ENFP. Uh, whereas uh, other styles that focus on practicality, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai, definitely something I'd recommend for SPs or SE users, essentially. Well, wow. we got another super chat here um, from Zanzi. What lecture are you most proud of and why? Thank you for all your work. You've helped me motivate a loved one out of a rut and start aiming up. Awesome. Zanzi. Uh, I love Zanzi's uh, comments, by the way. Zanzi's one of my uh, favorite people in the community. <laughs> uh, well, what lecture am I most proud of? I have a lot of lectures that I'm most proud of, actually, but... Um, I really, the way of the human being in season 13 is really important to me. Uh, so also is queen archetype in uh, season 13, because it's the most controversial lecture I've ever done is that uh, the queen uh -huh. archetype in season 13, it pisses off so many people, but it's like, they're like, Oh, you know, they start criticizing me. I'm like, but is what I'm saying wrong? No, but your presentation is horrible and it just hurts people's feelings. And I'm like, well, good good i'm glad it hurts people's feelings <laughs> like, because maybe they'll wake up and like seriously stop living their life uh -huh. that way but uh absolutely right. hands down most proud of uh based on the effect that it has on people and its utility definitely how do infjs compare to infps hands down is uh my most uh is the lecture i'm most proud of for sure that one hands why down because it's the lecture that I shove in people's face when people get on my who are the INFJs lecture and be like, no, this is all wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And then I give them that uh -huh. uh, link that one lecture to them. They're like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm not uh -oh. an INFJ. I'm really an INFP. I'm like, yeah, see, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> that's, exactly, yeah. that's exactly why. Oh, my goodness. All right. Next question. In your opinion, which of the types are easiest to type? Which types are the easiest to type, in my opinion? Yes, sir. Uh, definitely, it would be NJs um, for sure for me. But again, NJ. but for you, it would be NPs. And NP, exactly for you, it'd be NPs. Right. You know, so right. it's, it's based on it's based on the types you're trying to seek the most, basically, and that's right. and, and your mind is e able to detect those types fastest or easiest. The types that it has a hard time detecting are the types that are most similar to them so uh we what got, do est no we got we got Sorry. a super chat oh, we got another, we got another super chat uh you mentioned how se and si play into sexual relationships where can i learn more about this all right so all of the uh, uh sexual content that i will be talking about will be available through the patreon uh, and that's why I don't talk about it in the public streams, uh, streams or uh, or even as like the regular lectures on YouTube, because the content right, is very sexually. Yeah, I don't want to get flagged, and it's very sexually charged, and it is explicit. I, I get very explicit with explaining uh, the mechanics uh, and the physics and metaphysics involving sexual uh, interactions uh, as a result. <laughs> but basically, to um, 
to be <laughs> politically correct on how to answer your question, uh, experted sensors like to give sensations to introverted sensors who like to receive sensations. That's the most basic way that I could explain that without getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. So otherwise uh, right. we'll have way more detail in the, uh, 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 for example, the uh, there's a season titled sexual responses and types where I'll be going through the sexual response of every type basically. And, uh -huh. then I'll be, and then I'll have sexual compatibility. What types are you most sexually compatible with and why? And what does the bedroom experience look like when these two interact in the bedroom, et cetera? So. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm just imagining a CS uh, Joseph channel on uh, an explicit website. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, definitely Probably not interested. Not while while well, jab is while jab is coin operated, we're definitely not a cam whore show. That's that's true. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty dollars a button on Chase's shirt, <laughs> dude. <laughs> wow. Uh, All right. Next uh, question. Um, I ask everyone this for fun. Doesn't have much to do with type specifically, but what is your favorite and least favorite thing about life as a whole? Life as a whole. <laughs> Say that again. So what is your favorite and least favorite thing about life as a whole? My favorite and least favorite thing about life. Whew. Um, I honestly don't know yet. I need to experience more. SI inferior has got more to exploring to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say uh, the birth of my son was a big deal. Uh, I have this one memory actually that I really, really treasure. I have like five or six memories that I treasure big time, but this is one of my big ones, top 10 easily. And I was laying down watching television uh, back when I used to watch television because I don't watch television anymore. It's very rare that I actually watch television now. Very rare. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, I work 16 hour days like a madman. Uh, but uh, the point is I... I was laying down and my son, he was, I don't know, seven or eight months. And uh, he's, he's crawling around on the floor, you know, doing, hanging out, having fun. And he comes up next to me and he looks up at me as I'm like laying down and I'm, and I'm laying down like this, you know, and then, and then he starts laying down next to me like that. And then we have a photo of it. It's hilarious as he's uh, mirroring me because he's, he was in, STP NFJ Quadra child at that point. It was uh, it was very cute. Um, so that would definitely be one of the uh, best things for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and and another um, uh, another one is uh, the fact that like I was in little league for one year. I was in little league for one year playing baseball, and my batting average was zero. I had the worst batting average in the entire <laughs> league, but I also had the highest on base percentage. Why? Because my expert intuition could tell what the pitcher was going to throw. And because I was always able to tell what he threw, I knew what to swing and what not swing at. And I would just end up getting walked over and over and over again. And I had the highest on base percentage in the league. And I ended up scoring a bunch of runs because of that, even though my batting average was zero. Welcome <laughs> to ENTPs in baseball. <laughs> Wow. All right. Um, let's go to the next question, which is why don't INTJ and ESFP actually work out, even though Socionics insists that a duality exists? Here we go. Another duality question. This oh, is like number gosh. six. This is like, I don't know. It happens every time. So it's probably number 12. Another duality question. ESFP, INTJ just does not work because it's like the right. ESFP is like, ooh, I'm going to give you a really good sensation. And then the INTJ is like, no, I don't want you to give me a sensation. I have SID when leave me alone. Right. I'm here to give you a good sensation. Well, I worry about you giving me a good sensation. I'm not sure you're going to be able to do it right. Wow, you're like hitting my performance anxiety right now. Well, why would I ever want to have a, a sexual relationship with you ever again? Well, fine. If you don't want to, then I don't want to. And then, you know, it just, just completely devolves in this giant, like, explosion, right. you know. Otherwise, they're just forcing each other or or they're going into you know, cognitive transitioning the size of the mind that is just not really going to find interesting. Uh, and, and it's going right. to be, you know, not healthy in the long run. 
So not right. a relationship I would recommend at all. Oh, look, yeah. we got a super chat. Yeah. I mean, I was going to actually say on that note, I mean, the duality relationship is effectively the hero function beating up on the demon function. Yeah, exactly. That, that's and, that's going to help. each partner triggering each other to shit. Okay, uh, Periani asks, fractals occur in nature. Maybe the four sizes of mine are the first iteration of a fractal driven by neural network growth. Example, you develop your subconscious neural network pathway when then build layers under itself and the superego. So I think this is a the four minds of the four sides could develop naturally, and I think this is an evolution question. Well, I would like to state something. A lot of people, you know, think that uh, you know IQ is a measure of intelligence, but Periani here, he is an ESFP, a very brilliant ESFP, <laughs> by the way. And for him to ask like huge abstract questions like this while he has an ESFP ego using his INTJ subconscious in his manner is amazing to me. So awesome question. And I never even thought of fractals in nature in this way. So this is actually something I have to read up on. And it's very rare that I get something new like that. That's very creative. Um, so thank you wow. for that. I'm definitely gonna check that out. Otherwise I have right. no answer to offer because I'm not an expert. I have to do some research on that. So, and which I will. So that's fantastic. So the oh. answer is, I will get back to you, Periani, from Chase. Um, yeah. Deleted user asks, why do I always behave like a responding type with my ENTP friends, even though I'm an ENTP too? It irritates me because I oftentimes should be mouth closed. So this ENTP is having a problem with initiating with others or having a problem with responding to others? So this... so this ENTP is asking why are they consistently responding even though they're an ENTP? It irritates me because I oftentimes should be mouth closed. So I think what this person is asking is, why am I very responding as an ENTP? Two reasons. One, you actually, you, one, you actually are responding, or two, your SI inferior makes you extremely uncomfortable, causing you to be only responding because when you're not when you're not comfortable, you do not want to initiate. Yeah, it's Does that sum it up. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Like I'm an extrovert, sure, but when I go into um, when I go into social situations, I'm going to be in my ISFJ subconscious because I'm uncomfortable. It's going to take some right. of SE child or SE inferior to come over to me and introduce themselves, start introducing me to other people, so then I'm comfortable, and then I could become the life of the party as an extrovert. But until that happens, I may be stuck on my ISFJ side the entire time, and then I just probably just want to withdraw entirely because no one's really interfacing with me, and I'm like mm -hmm. super mega edgy. Because like, so I show up, I show up and then I'm, I'm literally, uh, well, I show up and I get, and I'm really shy at first, but unless I'm being made comfortable, mm -hmm. I'm going to remain shy the entire time. Cause I'm in my ISFJ subconscious cause I'm shy. That's just how it is. But once someone has gotten through the shyness, I can go way beyond that. And it's, and it's fantastic. Right. So. And also on that note, I think this person, he or she makes a reference to this occurring around mostly ENTP friends. It sounds like your ENTP friends are more dominant causing you to shadow transition or subconscious transition. Probably yes. shadow though. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, all right, next question. Uh, I've noticed that SJs love food and eating. I mean, if you look at them while they're eating, it's obvious they're extremely happy. I've also noticed they try to prohibit themselves from eating and are constantly in, on, off diet cycles. How true is that? That's actually very true. Uh, introverted sensing parent, SI hero, very much enjoy food and what they taste, but they end up exercising self-discipline to force themselves not to eat so that they don't end up overdoing themselves because for some reason, SJs believe that if you eat less, then, then you're not going to get fat, which is technically not true. And they should probably learn about right. how triglycerides and sugar works. Sugar is what makes you fat. Eating fat does not make you fat. And I don't understand why people right. think that eating fat makes you fat. That's not true. Eating sugar makes you fat, but whatever. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, but that's just kind of how SJs operate. And uh, as a result of that, um, um, you know, uh, it's it's through self. It, they're just exercising their self discipline, even though they're doing it wrong. It's still self discipline. So, uh huh. All right. Um, next question is: If INFJs use their critic function to force morals on others with their parent, how does the opposite effect work for an ENFP? 
Can you ask that again? So if INFJs use their critic function to right. force their morals onto others right. with their parent, right. how does the opposite effect work for an ENFP? Okay. Uh, the ENFP basically starts uh, guilt tripping people. Uh, guilt tripping people. Right. like, And they do this like in sales FFK, a lot. They try it. Yeah, yeah, they 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 try to guilt people like like especially in a sales situation they they'll guilt people out of their money like I've seen it I've had it happen to me multiple times actually I've seen it happen to my dad and my dad pulled out his wallet buying something he didn't even want or need because supposedly the ENFP guilted him in doing saying it would help this big cause or whatever so yeah definitely not ideal okay. Next question is, dear man with nice hands, so is she talking about me or you? Do you have any advice for INFJs getting over a heartbreak? Uh, yes. Uh, get a new relationship with somebody else sooner than later. Uh, and I recommend using the <laughs> Shaper app to do this, S-H-A-P-R, to get people who are like-minded and have similar interests and then develop relationships from there. Or... Uh, mm -hmm go to schools and whatnot, so become a librarian and have relationships with teachers because teachers are usually NFPs and uh, you can find NFPs or go to politics and philosophy groups, find NFPs are usually running them. Go to Toastmasters, NFPs are usually directly involved. Go to po poetry slam competitions, NFPs are constantly poeting around as well as fellow at NFJs, that's where NFs are. Or if you really, 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 really want to fast track your way to finding a good partner that's actually awesome and potentially good for a long-term relationship, potentially a lifetime as an INFJ, why don't you just go like, you know, make yourself useful and go volunteer. Like seriously, uh -huh. go volunteer. You'll have NFPs like literally everywhere. So just go volunteer and not stop until you find <laughs> what you're looking for. Uh-huh. Okay. Next question, can INFJs become indifferent to like INTPs? Not towards a person, but towards most things in life, or is this not related to type at all? Ask that again. Like, so can INFJs way. become indifferent? Right. Kind of like what INTPs do. Right. And they say not towards a person, but towards most things in life. So mm. I mean, if they're really depressed, sure. Uh, but mm -hmm. not really. It's not really. I mean, they're very well aware of what's happening in the moment in the present. So I'm going to have to say no to that. Right. One. Mm -hmm. And I mean, an INFJ's critic function would be FI critic. So they constantly need to be worrying about whether they're a good person or not. Yeah. So they would have to be aware of everything around them or else they wouldn't function properly. Yeah. Um. Can TE trickster behave like SE trickster, not knowing what other people will think when you tell something, being similar to not knowing what kind of experience you are going to give people? Yeah, it can it kind of it can look like it, but again, you shouldn't be typing people based off of cognitive functions either. You should be typing right. them based off of the type grid or the temperament matrix or cognitive axis, cognitive synchronicity, but never picking out individual right. functions. That's a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, like, even when we type, we point out the cognitive functions, but we just use it as kind of like a, it's kind of like a check at the end. So we'll use the type grid and then we'll say, here are the functions we point out. Does this make sense? We don't say, oh, here's the functions we pointed out. Therefore, he must be this type. Exactly. So use the type grid and maybe use the functions as a last check. So Chase has done the videos from hero through to critic. Or have you put yeah, out Trickster yet? No, I have not put out Trickster yet. Coming out very soon. Right. Probably this so weekend. So you um, might even be able to identify it more specifically, but I would not rely on that. Use the type grid. Um, hi, here's a puzzle for you. I'm, a ba I'm in a band of professional musicians, and I'm curious on how we can be more productive in promoting our music in a business sense, because that we're struggling with. So if you're in a band... If you were to regard the band as a business based on our types, what strength might be lacking and what could be holding us back? We have two ESFJs, one ESFP, one ISFP, and I'm an INFP. What could be holding I am quite back? certain there are no mistypes. So I would say, uh, I, I got this one. I would say, find someone to do marketing for you. Like, yeah. do you have a Twitter? Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, do you really have a YouTube channel? Read Crush It, Crushing It, and ja uh, Jab, 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 Right Hook by uh, Gary Vaynerchuk immediately. 
Also get the SMMA course through Ty Lopez as well, because uh, that'll actually just give you a foundation to get started. Do all of that and then uh, get your marketing up off the ground uh, for your uh, exactly. brand if you're banned and then just start distributing your content and just start pumping out content. You need to get your members of your team focused on making the content and then just market said content. Everything else will come in time, basically. Okay. Um... Do you have any more comments on that, like regards to their types? Or is it just the marketing, you reckon? Say again. Do you have any more comments regarding that question? Or do you reckon marketing's the yeah, main I, thing? I, I reckon I reckon it's the main thing. And they just need to be focused on content. <laughs> and uh <sighs> The ISFP would probably the ISFP the INFP would have to take on like the clear leadership position uh, because using mm -hmm. their ETJ subconscious basically in that regard. Right. Okay. Do you think any nemesis could cause could be a cause of the timid ways INFJ speak? Could any nemesis cause them to not want to be overheard by other people? No, that's their SE inferior. That's their SE inferior. Uh, but right. uh, they're more. But any uh, nemesis is about is their paranoia. Yeah, the paranoia being uh, uh, worried about other people's intentions. Yeah, right. Whether people are going to betray them or whether they can trust other people and whatnot. Um. So next question, which type is the most extroverted extrovert and which type is the most introverted introvert? Which type introverted introvert? Most extroverted, the, uh, the most extroverted extrovert. Uh, it's, it's a cross between ESTP and ESFP, quite frankly, one of those two. Mm -hmm. uh, and the most introverted introvert, definitely INFP, hard hardcore really INFP. INFP over INTP yeah I mean you could argue either way in the same way that I could argue argue ESFP ESTP but it just depends mm -hmm. yeah I was thinking more INTP because sometimes with that FI uh, FI hero INFPs can get a lot of confidence Whereas an INTP will have that FE inferior and be all constantly guilty and afraid of getting the that thing, bad experience with the SI. The thing is, the thing is, though, is that um, INFPs don't really need to get. Uh, they don't need that self worth, that uh, FE need for other people, like INTPs right. do, and that's why you see INTPs more at bars than you do INFPs. Quite frankly. And ESTPs, they have to be giving someone a good experience and making someone feel good because they draw their self-worth through making someone feel good. That's why they're technically more extroverted than an ESFP, just on the needs of their cognitive mm -hmm. functions. And that's why I maintain ESTP is the most extrovert extrovert, and INFP is the most introvert introvert for sure. Okay. Um, Got about seven minutes CS. left. Right, right, right. CS, why can't you be informative initiating control? Why can't we be informative initiating control? Uh, because when you are informative and you're initiating, uh, you can't have control, basically. You just can't because uh, try being informative with somebody and having a control while not being responding simultaneously because, you right. d yeah, your functions are not stacked that way. It just doesn't work. The cognitive access doesn't allow for that, and that's why everything is in perfect balance. Oh, we got another super chat from awesome. Peter Perez, and he asks, "How can ENTJs find their place in social situations, even though others want to bring them down?" All right, I know exactly how to answer that question, Peter Perez. The answer to that question is to make other people as comfortable as possible, and give right. them a use good that SE child. Use SE child. Give them a good experience. Throw a party for them. Uh, be an excellent mm -hmm. host. Uh, elect yourself in charge, but be that amazing host and make it about everyone else's experience and not your experience. And then you will be successful exactly. in social situations as an ENTJ. You know, go walk up to them, pick them up, put them on your shoulders, put them down, make jokes, stuff like that. I've seen many ENTJs do that and make people, you know, laugh and have a good experience. Um, what would an INTJ in ENTP shadow look like? What would an INTJ in ENTP shadow look like? Constantly doing get rich schemes over and over again. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> They're that INTJ <laughs> trying to sell you on Amway or Advocare <laughs> or Five Links or uh, uh, ACN or whatever the new uh, pyramid scheme of the month is for sure. Yeah, definitely. Right. That's how I would answer that. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking we do another four Discord questions and then we see if there's anything in the YouTube. All right, so how does an INFJ in Shadow and Super Ego look like? In shadow and super ego, like what does that? Mean? I think it means separately. So in Se shadow and then separately in super ego. Uh, so in their shadow, um, they can be, they could try and to get other people to think about different things, uh, being what other people want. But then it could also lead to selfishness and corruption. ENFP shadow is very selfish, uh, and that's why INFJs consistently get accused of. Uh, in social situations when they're being guilty about something and then the other person is like, well, why are you always making it about you? You know, it's like really annoying uh -huh. when INFJs do that and ENFJs do it too because they have INFP uh, shadow and that is also inherently selfish and their guilt is technically uh -huh. selfish and NFJs have to contend with that on a regular basis. Their super ego mm -hmm. though, uh, it's where the INFJ elects themselves judge, jury, and executioner as the ISTJ jumps to conclusions about your intentions and before you even have a chance to prove loyalty to them, they've already basically sent you into the fiery dumpster down down the uh, hill, bounce down the hill into the pit of despair that leads to the fires of hell. So, right, you know, it's a scene from forever. the INFJ door slam. Yep, the door slam. At that point, right, right, you can go beyond that. Okay, has your personal opinion slash judgment of each types changed since creating this YouTube channel and interacting with a variety of people who are all interested in this sort of thing? No. This comes from an INFP? Answer is no. <laughs> I think there is a, uh, I think that's a bit of a loaded question, like an informative way of saying, uh, do you still hate INFPs? No, no he doesn't hate, hate INFPs. INFPs. He just no, I don't. their weaknesses so that they can grow. That's right. I have good relationships with some INFPs and some interesting relationships with others and some bad relationships with others. But for example, the person who taught me how to do podcasting uh, for this channel is an INFP, and I love the guy very much. So right. All right. Next question: I have seen that we use a lot the four-letter system. I know it's easier to get people into, but wouldn't it be better in the long term to describe this type by other names more often? Or do you think it's fine the way it is? I would prefer to use other names, but for the sake of SEO and uh, for the sake of the audience, because right. people are so used to MBTI letters, uh, that's why we use the, the MBTI letters. Right. Okay. And this next question. Hi, Chase. Any advice on how an INFJ can start remembering positive memories in the past? People who are around me love reminiscing, and oftentimes they tell me good times they've had with me. 95% of the time, my response is, I don't remember. I try so hard, and I so, I sorry. I try so hard to try and remember, but I can't. The only mem memories I remember are the bad ones, and in the end, I start I have memories of them. The memories they tell me feel so foreign to me, like I've never lived through them before. But according to them, I guess I did. Question mark. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of normal for INFJs. Uh, so just seek to make mm -hmm. new memories consistently and share those experiences with people that you're around as an SE inferior. Have Surround yourself with SI users and uh, write things down consistently so you don't forget and also take a lot of pictures and like put them on an Instagram so you can review them later and then be reminded through those right. because you're creating totems. It's all about totem creation. Oh, okay. I'm just going to do, I know I said only four, but this one's a really short one. All right. Uh, it actually could be rather long, but hi, Christmas is coming. What's the best gifts for different types? Oh, what's the best gifts for different types? Uh, okay. I think I'm going to do an entire episode on that as a Christmas special and not answer that question. Uh -huh. Perfect. And we have a uh, super chat. Yeah. Hi, Chase. Can I request a scenario for your engineering and ISTJ video? I'll send an email and you can see if it might interest you. Thanks. All You're right. good at this, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvie. And yes, Sylvie, you can send a scenario and I will consider the scenario. 
I already had one in mind, but if your scenario is better, I'll definitely do that. And if anyone has any requests for scenarios, uh, you can go ahead and uh, put that uh, in Discord. Which channel should they do that, though? I think. Um, suggestions. Uh, do you have a suggestion channel yet? Typing suggestions. Yeah. We should just make a plain suggestions Gosh. channel. I'll put one up later. Yeah, put one up later. Thanks. But yes, uh, Sylvia, you can definitely send that to me. All right. Does anyone in YouTube have any last minute burning questions before we end the stream? Burning questions. Now is the time for burning questions. How does one gain an INTJ's trust by being loyal to them at the start and being brutally honest with them from the get go? And by making sure that you're putting up boundaries as soon as possible and enforcing those boundaries while simultaneously not having any covert contracts of any kind. That 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 answers that question. How should I go right. about developing my terrible FE as an INTP? By forcing yourself into social situations over and over and over again and failing a million times until you get it right. You have to approach it like weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Can an INTJ have a developed FE? Uh through emulation, yes. Uh, Pencil racer, what is the difference between camaraderie and compatibility as you age mature? Does your does your attraction uh, to certain types shift? Uh, yes, your attraction to certain types can shift as a result of human nurture, and I will discuss that in uh, the uh, romantic compatibility uh, lectures. Um, like for example. Um, I am an ENTP, which means I am highest compatible with NTJs, but because of my personal experience with various relationships, various romantic relationships in my life, I ended up preferring NFJs actually over NTJs, uh, just based on human nurture uh, and uh, interactions with uh, various NJs uh, romantically in my life. Uh, so that's just one such example of that. Uh, in terms of camaraderie versus uh, compatibility, compatibility leads you to deep, meaningful relationships. That's not necessarily has anything to do with teaching or professional development. Camaraderie is more of a shoulder to shoulder relationship. We're in this together. We're going to solve these problems together, but it's very external focus. It's not necessarily internal focus, whereas compatibility is actually more intrinsic instead of extrinsic is probably how I would put it. Is cognitive uh, synchronicity with perceiving functions or judging functions more important uh, for compatibility? Uh, no, it's not. It's not more important. And uh, there's a reason why, and I'm not able to talk about why that is yet. Um, we'll have to wait for those lectures to come out. And that explains the answer to that question. But that is a, uh, a great uh, question for sure. Um, and mm -hmm. that was Dirtman asking that. Uh, uh, and prehistoric tuna. My brother had a brain injury in a skateboarding accident. I think he was an SP before. He is basically a different person now. Is there a chance that his ego is entirely shifted? Yes, and it is likely it is shifted to his super ego. And if he's behaving healthy, it is in a healthy way. Uh, and then his ego and his super ego potentially shifted sides as a result of that. And then his previous ego becomes the uh, the new super ego with all of the super ego traits, which can happen in brain injuries. For sure. <clears throat> Hengster, how do you know you feel guilty or shame? Uh, so if you do something bad, uh, Hengster, um, are you afraid of what people think of you? Uh, or are you afraid of the fact that you actually harm the person? If you're, Or if you're concerned that you actually harm the person. If you're concerned that you actually harm this person, that's guilt. If you're concerned of what other people think of you as a result of that and causing you to feel bad based on what that other person will think, that's shame. It's two sides of the same coin, basically. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. How do I get my ENTJ SO to give me space from time to time as an INTP? By basically, oh, your ENTJ significant other. Uh, you state your boundaries. You go, up to, you go up to them and be like, hey, you're making me uncomfortable right now. I need to do this. I need to focus on this right now. And just make it about your comfort and make it about what you think. And, but tell them that later you'll interface with them later. And you don't mean to alienate them or make them feel alone. It's not about that. Uh, it's just uh, be like, hey, 
I need to do this right now. I need some space right now. And they'll be like, okay, sure, I'll give you space. You know, just make it about your comfort, basically. And and if they like, and then, but then also after you make it about your comfort, tell them that later, okay, yeah, we could definitely like, you know, uh, hang out later or watch television later or have sex later, et cetera. Um, so that's Ethan Davis 9424's question. And uh, why are INTPs immune to peer pressure? It has the opposite effect on me. INTPs are not exactly immune to peer pressure. It just depends on how much of a shut-in they are or how shy they are. Uh, but uh, they can be guilty of doing things, and that could be applied through peer pressure, no problem. Love that typing. Uh, Heather Bryant, and this is the last question, uh, except that's not a question, so never mind. <laughs> yes, Java is writing us a novel. Thank you, Cortex, for pointing that out. Yes, I am. <laughs> Do you think 40000 is a fair price for DJ Academics? Um, I have no DJ idea. DJ Academics? Um, I'm sure you could take like the, the Dead Mouse class on uh, YouTube and get something better than what they're able to teach. <laughs> what is the... And... Uh, oh, we got another super chat. Periani. What is the thoughts? best way Sacred to make universal friends? Shapes of present. So, sorry? All right. Periani's got a super chat question. More thoughts. Sacred slash universal shapes are present in neural network systems. This is the organic basis for archetypes and the collective unconscious, i.e. genetic inheritance is a big pick fractal. Yeah, I, I could see that, especially oh. if you apply it to epigenetics as well, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that's actually a really good point. Definitely going to be looking into the uh, the more uh, more of the uh, fractal uh, approach because I think that's pretty, pretty creative for sure. And how to hit the critic function and not the inferior is, as tended not to know the distinct difference. Uh, Hangster, I'm going to be doing that actually with season 21, uh, not season 16. Uh, but uh, potentially later, uh, we'll, we'll look at that for sure. All right, cool. Uh, so we're at the end of the stream, and uh, thank you for coming. I am live Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 Eastern, or technically 9.30 Eastern is what it's actually been recently, yep. LOL. Uh, so yeah, uh, join the Discord server if you want to get your questions in. The link is in the description, or if you click on the bio link on my Instagram account and then click Discord, you can get on to Discord uh, it requires a phone verification. Uh, we don't know your phone number, so don't freak out about that for all of you INJs who are paranoid about that stuff. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we don't see your phone number. Uh, it's just so that if we ban you, you can't come back. That's why we have it. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's for security purposes. So don't worry. Uh, anyway, uh, happy to uh, have you all. And thank you for being such an awesome community. Uh, we're definitely going to be back. More lectures available this weekend, uh, season 16, yep. season 21, season 10. And then uh, after that, we'll be getting into season 14 and 17, which will be amazing, uh, especially since season 14 is going to be like the first rendition of romantic compatibility. Oh, yeah. So nice. awesome. Uh, great to see you all. Have a good night. And uh, have a good night. See you on the next live stream, which will be Tuesday. See you Tuesday. Yeah, see you all Tuesday. Remember, we still have not come up with a type for Tuesday, so feel free to send your suggestions. Yeah, whichever person to do. Later. Have a good night.